Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott, and today we're baking out multiple textures onto one map. So taking textures from lots of different objects and combining them all onto one map so it can be efficient for games and lots of other things. Now I believe there are some add-ons that do this, Texture Atlas, I'm not sure it's been updated for 2.8. It can be slightly awkward and I'm going through this so that you understand what those add-ons are doing. So if those add-ons are glitching in any way or not quite working, you can probably figure it out with a fairly good understanding of how baking actually works. Also, there are other programs that do this, and I believe from what I've heard, they do it better than Blender. Perhaps you can put comments in the description if you know these programs or you have any advice for other people. So you can see I've got three different objects here and they've got different types of textures. So if we go across to the shading tab, here we have the wooden plank and you can see its texture there, not particularly well painted, but hopefully you'll bear with me on that one. The same for the stone, not great in terms of the texture, but it has a different texture completely. And then this one is actually procedurally made. So a Musgrave into a magic into a hue and saturation value node. And we want to combine all these three onto one texture map here. And I say texture map, that's when we're thinking about the UV map and the texture itself. When you're combining all of them together, it's sometimes also called a texture atlas. So let's go to the UV editing workspace and think about the UVs. So I'm in edit mode for this sphere here, and you can see it's got an unwrap. It's the kind of default unwrap that comes with a UV sphere. And for each of these, they've been unwrapped as well in order to texture paint. Again, not particularly efficiently or anything like that, but that's not the point here. Now to see these UV maps, we need to go down to the object data properties here and under the UV map. And you can see each of them have one UV map there. If I go back into object mode, they've all got the same named UV map. They are of course different, but it's got the same name. So whenever you add a UV map to one of your objects, it's called UV map like this. What we need to do though, is create a new one for each of these and then bake from this old map, which will have this texture to a new one, which will combine them all together onto one texture map. So what we'll need to do is to create a new UV map for each of these. And this is where I say add-ons can be useful for this because we have to click on each object and press a plus sign and create a new UV map. I'm going to rename it to bake just so we know exactly what I'm talking about and it's nice and clear, but we need to do this for each object. And that's where it's useful to have a plugin. So each of these have now two UV maps, a bake and a UV map, the original one. Now the original one is the rendered one. So if I go into Eevee at the moment, that's what we'll see. So the camera is the one that's being rendered or being shown to us in the viewport. So if I click on each of these, you can see that they've got the original UV map. If I were to change this to bake now with the camera, it won't make any difference because they've still got the same UV map. These UV maps are exactly the same until I re-unwrap it. So I'll change this back to the camera for the original one. And I'm going to unwrap this again using the new bake map. Make sure they're all highlighted in gray, so we know that that's the UV map we're going to be changing. Select them all, into edit mode, make sure they're all selected again. You can see them all on top of each other there. Now if I unwrap again with U, Smart UV Project, I'll turn the island margin up to 0.06 and press OK. And it's spread them out over my image. So we've got a new texture map for all of these onto one image like this. The one thing I do find though, if I zoom in a bit, and go across. When you're unwrapping them all together like this, occasionally, let's get to face mode, you can see these ones are really close and that is not a 0.06 margin. And I'm not sure why that does that. I think that's some sort of glitch. So just make sure they're separated so you don't get any overlapping images when you're baking. So now back into object mode and let's click on my stone again. Now if I change this new bake UV to what's visible in our viewport or rendered in our viewport, you can see that it changes it. Let's go into edit mode and see what's going on there. So I change from this one, which is the original one. And if I make that viewable, you can see that's what that one looks like. Now, if I change to the bake and make that one visible, you can see it's using this new map here. So we have to go from this one. I'll change that to the render again, across to the baked one. So in order to do that, we will need a new image to bake to. So let's create a new one at the top here. And I'm going to call this bake all three, because this is my third time of doing this. I don't need the alpha because there's no transparencies and I'll press okay. So there's my bake all three texture, but we can't bake yet because Blender doesn't know that it needs to bake to this texture. We need to bring down a new window and change this to the shader editor. And in the shader editor, 
I'll press N to get rid of this panel. We will need to place this texture. So I'll just copy this one for now, Shift D to duplicate and change that to All Bake 3. Okay, so you'd think that it would be simple enough to now have that image selected, select all these and press Bake and it would bake onto this image. But it isn't quite that simple, unfortunately, because if I go into Object Mode again and select my wooden plank, you can see that the active texture for the wooden plank is this one up here, the wooden plank texture. So if I bake, it's gonna bake over this wooden plank. So I need to have, let's click on the stone again, this all bake texture. So I'll press Control C to copy it in the plank material as well. So Control V, put it in there and make sure it is definitely selected. So highlighted white. Let's double check it's selected for the stone as well. And we also need to put it into our procedural texture here for this swirly ball. So Control V in here as well. And that's also selected. So with each of these, they've got that texture selected. So Blender knows to bake the information from this to its new UV map, which is selected there from the renderable one here, the viewed one here for each of these objects. So I'll go through that just quickly again. So it's going from this one because it's the rendered icon there to this one, which is selected now in gray. So that's from this UV map to this UV map. And it's going from the original textures, which are rendered here, to the new textures for each of these objects, these materials that they each have. Okay, it sounds a bit confusing, but that's the process that's going on here. So if I select all of them and go to my rendered properties, make sure you're in cycles, down to bake, I'll choose diffuse, and I'll turn off direct and indirect, and it's important to change the margin. I'll explain why by leaving it at 16 for the moment. I'll press bake and you'll see what's going on. The bake panel down the bottom here starts baking and it will do this for each object. And it appears in here when one's done. And there's the second one. And there's the third. But you can see we've got problems. If I go into edit mode now, you can see the overlap caused by that margin. So that margin kind of spreads it out onto the other ones. Now, usually that's okay, but because it's doing it one at a time, it puts one on top of the other. So we need to change that margin so they don't overlap. So let's change it to three pixels, which should be fine. Because I've got an island margin of 0 0.06, all selected and press bake again. There's the first one and there's the stone. We don't seem to be getting any overlap, so that's good. And there's the swirly ball. Let's just quickly see if there's any overlap issues. Note we seem to be fine, a little bit close there, but we seem to be okay. So let's save that texture, image, save as, and we know it's saved down here. Now the other thing you'll need to do before you, let's say, export these models to your game or whatever you're doing with them, is to go across to the UV object data properties. Let's go back to object mode and click one of our objects. We've still got two UV maps on there and they've all still got their original texture. So let's create a new material and hook up our all bake three texture to it. So new material, I'll delete that node and plug in our new one. Now that looks strange at the moment, but when I switch over to the bake with that little render icon there, you can see it's now using this in the viewport. Let's select these two and this one last, the stone that is, and press control L to link the materials up. They both look funny as well, but we need to change that to the rendered and that one to the rendered. And now they're all looking at these UVs with this material up here and this texture. There is one last thing to do though, we need to get rid of this original UV bake. But I strongly suggest that you save here because if you accidentally delete the bake, you'll have to go through the whole process again. So let's save our work. And for each of these, let's delete the original UV map. So press the minus sign on that. Next one, select it, press the minus sign. Next one, select it and press the minus sign. Now each of these are using this new map. We can export them and plug the same material into each of them. And then we only get one texture call rather than three. Okay, so that is baking multiple objects onto one map. Yes, it's a slightly complex process, so you may want to be using add-ons, but it's good to understand how it all works. Thanks for watching, and I hope this helps.